So I'm gonna go over the last example that I have on higher order derivatives. And what I wanna point out to you, this is an application question. This is kind of a physics-esque question that is very common in calculus. But I wanna point out to you that the key most important thing to do right off the bat is to actually read the question and pay very close attention to key words. For example, this one talks about the velocity. Okay, so we're not given position or displacement. So this is not actually the, what I would call the original function. What we are given here is meters per second. This equation is actually representing the first derivative of the function. So I don't really know where the where this um, object, because that's what it says, it's an object, is located or how far it's changed from where it started. What I all, you know, all I know here is its velocity. You know, essentially uh, that, that question of how far fast is it traveling, either in positive or negative uh, direction. Um, so the question here, part A, says what is the velocity of the object at t equals 3? Well, it gives me the velocity as a function. So if I just want to know where it is at t equals 3, I really just need to plug in that 3. So we'll do 36 minus 3 squared. Now 3 squared is 9, so we're going to do 36 minus 9, which gives me 27. Now, I'm going to add in um, the units back here. So this is 27 meters per second. So that tells me how fast it is traveling. Now, the next question says, what is the speed of the object at t equals 3? Now, again, speed is related to the velocity. The only difference is that speed has to be positive at all times. So had I gotten a negative number for the velocity, I'd have to just make it positive. Again, these two things are related. Velocity and speed are almost exactly the same thing. The only difference is velocity can be negative. Speed must always be positive. So again, I'll write it down. Speed equals the absolute value of the velocity. Okay. Well, so in this case, I still have a positive velocity at 27 meters per second. So that means its speed is still going to be the same answer. Again, had I gotten a negative here, I just make it positive, and that would be the correct speed. Now, part C asks me for the acceleration. So the question is, how is acceleration and velocity related to each other? Well, acceleration, which typically a lot of people write it as A of T, is the derivative of the velocity. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to come up here and I need to take the derivative of this 36 minus t squared. So take this 36 minus t squared and I'm going to take its derivative. I'll write d dt. So that tells me I'm taking the derivative with respect to t. Um, remember the derivative of 36 is just going to be 0 and that t squared is going to involve the power rule. So I'll pull the negative down using the difference rule and 2 comes out front and it's going to come t to the first, because again, we subtract one from that exponent. Two minus one gives me one. So that right there is my acceleration, and I wanna know what it is at three. So I'm just gonna plug in three. So we'll do negative two times three, essentially to the first power, which gives me negative six. Now, important thing to notice about this is how the units change. Well, in this case, we are taking the derivative with respect to t, where t is in seconds. So what this actually does is it adds another seconds down here in my unit. So it's actually meters per second squared or meters per second per second. So that's an important fact to know about units in derivatives is what we're going to do is we're going to change whatever that denominator is and we're going to uh, sometimes square it or even cube it if we have to. Um, but hopefully, again, this helps you guys better understand a little bit more about how uh, higher order derivatives play into things. Please let me know if you have any questions.